I recently made a couple videos for Flux Academy. One was a walkthrough of my step-by-step -step process for creating a startup website. And the other one breaks down how I've cut my project timelines for a work like that nearly in half without compromising the quality of the work. And today I wanna to summarize the top takeaways for both of those in case you miss them or want a review. So if you're like me and you love real project examples of implementing a step-by-step -step system that will make website clients so happy that they refer more and more people your way, and if you wanna know how to handle that growing workload without working more and more hours, then stick around because I have a bunch more videos on those topics in the works, and this one is packed, so let's dive in. All right, first off, let's summarize the most important takeaways from my step-by-step -step startup website creation video. The first big tip here is to make the discovery phase really thorough. And what I like to do is use a really structured kickoff document that has a ton of questions about the business's origin story, their product's benefits, their long-term vision. And I like to set expectations with the client that this is the most homework that will be asks of them throughout the website project. After the knowledge transfer phase, things get a lot easier for them, but I do refer back to this document throughout the whole project. So it's really the foundation of everything that comes after it. And I like to be very thorough and make sure that everything's nice and documented and organized. The next big thing I do is create a structure for the website content and fill in the copy. So I know that not everybody likes to offer copywriting. It's just a personal preference. But for me, this content document based Basically ends up serving as a wireframe. I like to have these flexible content templates and tailor the structure of the content to the specific type of business I'm designing for. And I use AI to support filling in these templates, but not to 100% replace my role in the process. So I will feed AI really well-crafted prompts that include things like the answers in the kickoff questionnaire and guidance on tone. And then I will refine the AI generated copy rather than just copy and paste it because Google has gotten really good at recognizing generic AI content. So I really try to edit the copy in order to avoid anything that sounds very generic or unnatural or just off brand for the client. After the website structure and copy are established is when probably the most fun part happens, which is designing two or three homepage options. So I like to explore different ways of having the information kind of flow together and I try emphasizing different points. My main advice here would be to really make sure that when you present this work to help the client understand how each option would influence their audience's experience of the website so that they can make a really informed decision. And once the homepage is set, I will fill in the rest of the pages leaning heavily on rhythm sections for support. For this particular project, I created the assets for all product animations at this step, but I did delegate the production of the animation files. And I also delegated the Webflow development. So I don't do this for every project, but I did for this one. And I will tell you my thoughts on delegating a little later in this video. The last important point of my step-by-step -step walkthrough, and this is maybe the most important point, is to remember to use every single project as an opportunity to refine your systems. So checklists, standard operating procedures, and templates, they're all so important but they also need to always be evolving. So I would say that continuous refinement is really key to running a great freelance business or studio. And with all of the new tools that are coming out and being updated all the time, I think it's really more important now than ever to be constantly evolving. In part two of this video, I wanna to talk to you about how I've been able to complete projects like this one in about half the time it used to take me. And it really comes down to three Three things. The first of those is seriously investing in your foundational tool set. So what this has looked like for me is setting aside one entire day per week to work on the business. So no client work, just tools, templates, 
processes and documentation. So basically just behind the scenes stuff that never exactly feels urgent, but that can save you hours and days in the longer term. And a couple examples of things that I've tackled on these days are creating a library of go-to typeface pairings so that I would stop spending hours hunting for fonts on every project. I spent a day experimenting with different AI image generating tools so that I would have a reliable way to generate high quality visuals for my websites. And again, this was so I would stop spending so much time looking for stock photography. And that's just a few examples, but the trick is really having that time protected in your calendar. And then I would say being really honest with yourself about where in your business you're losing the most time and then creating processes to speed up or automate those things. The next big change that allowed me to speed up my projects so much was learning to delegate, which I know is not for everyone. Some people are super committed to being true solopreneurs. I definitely was at first, but for me, learning to delegate was a massive game changer for my time and income. And I say learning to delegate because I've really come to regard it as a skill just like any other, in the sense that you have to try it out, you probably won't be that good at it at first, but it gets easier each time. And here's a list of things that I think it can be great for web designers to consider delegating. And I have a whole video going into detail about how exactly to approach subcontracting if you've never done it before. So if you're curious, definitely check that out. But the main idea is that creating great websites involves so many different skills. And most of us are not both amazing and super fast at every single one of those. So I think that acknowledging that and learning to delegate and then reinvesting all that saved time into the super high impact stuff or into getting more clients can really be a game changer. The last way that I was able to speed up my process so much was more of a mental shift, and that was prioritizing long-term vision over short-term wins. For me, this really came down to getting comfortable saying no to some projects that were not a good fit or that were below what I was comfortable getting paid, which to me felt kind of scary at first. But ultimately, I realized that it's easier to land and focus on one bigger project rather than three or four smaller projects that all might be super different from one another, making repeatable systems super hard to implement. Saying no, like I said, it can be hard, but I think that skipping poor fit projects in favor of making those more impactful investments in your business or in favor of putting your time towards landing the bigger, great fit project, for me was a really important mental and strategic shift to make. So that was a lot of ground we just covered. I hope it was helpful. And once again, if you wanna see more videos of real life examples of how my projects come together, or if you wanna hear more about how I'm continuing to refine my processes to ensure great client experiences and efficient project timelines, definitely check back in because I have a lot of exciting things in the works. Thanks. How to implement a step-by-step -step system. System, a system. Get it together. <coughs> of prioritizing 